how are you going to find a soulmate if you don't know how to have soulful sex? Tantra creates soulmates mm. because you're able to connect with someone at that, that depth at those levels, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's time that we started to, to know what's fully possible. Let's talk about Tantra. Okay, I know you're sitting there in anticipation of this one, and maybe you're even making sure that your headphones are securely fastened to your ears because we are about to dive in. But let me tell you, my friend, the things I learned from this extremely hot conversation they are going to benefit you in so many ways. And I'm not just talking about SEX. That is a part of it because it really does come back to you. That's what Tantra is all about. But I have been waiting a long time to talk about Tantra for a really long time. But I wasn't just going to get any person to talk about this. There are a lot of people out there that claim that they are Tantra coaches or they're talking about Tantra but I couldn't have just anyone on the show because there are a lot of imposters out there. I wanted someone that truly understood the art of Tantra, sexual energy, sexual healing, and I found her, and her name is Dominique DeVita. In addition to her being a master Tantra and self-love coach, she is also a registered nurse for over 30 years, and through her own experience with medicine, and also her sexual experience and her learning and her growing, she is going to open your eyes and your chakras on what it truly means to connect to yourself, which in turn is going to allow you to be a better partner and an even better lover. We talk about tapping into that sexual energy, how to have better orgasms and master your body, what it means to find polarity with an emotionally available partner, and She's even going to take some questions and answer them from the listeners, and she is not holding back. Plus, Dominique shares her own tantric aha moment that allowed her to what she calls bliss out and have her first soulgasm, one of many in her lifetime. We could all use a soulgasm, couldn't we? So she's going to show us how that's going to work. And if you're wondering how she is going to make that happen, no fear, no fear. She's offering a free masterclass on how to transform your love life right here on Holistically Speaking. And one more thing, if you are wondering how to have your questions answered on the show, you have something to share, or you just wanna amplify your voice, I'm giving you that space. Go to speakpipe.com slash Holistically Speaking and leave your voice message there. You can also leave a written message too at holisticallyspeaking at gmail.com, but I wanna give you the space to amplify your voice right here on Holistically Speaking. If you have a question, if you have a comment, you wanna share something about the podcast, that is the place to do it. Okay, enough from me. I know what you're here for. So if you're ready to get blissed out, you've come to the right place. Ooh, Dominique. I've been waiting for this one. <laughs> for I've some... been looking forward to this too. <laughs> you are a hard gal to nail down. So when you said yes, and you were like, let's do this, I could not have been more excited because this is such an important topic. And I don't just mean talking about Tantra, which is important. I mean, being open to talk about sex and sexuality and our own sexual energy and how we are putting that out there in the world and how we want to receive it. So yay. For finally getting you on holistically speaking thank you for being here oh you're welcome thank you for that invitation it's a pleasure to be here so dominique devita you have a lot of experience working in the health field as a registered nurse and i think my big question as somebody that is going from a registered nurse going into the field of healing in a way where you're holding space for people in sexuality and, and Tantra. How in the world did you move into that? That's a great question. You know, I've been a nurse since I was 19 mm. and I've been a nurse for over 30 years. And so I was so fascinated with the heart. Everything about the heart fascinated me. And I took have a special training where I can take the role of an assisting surgeon as an RNFA. So if a surgery requires two surgeons, I can take the role of the second surgeon and I would assist with open heart surgeries, brain surgeries, all kinds of things. And 
when I had my tantric awakening a decade ago, tomorrow actually will be a decade that I had my awakening. I realized that Tantra was the tools to open people's hearts. Not initially when I first had the awakening, but as I dove deeper into it and I had this amazing healing, I was like, wow, you know, this can really help people. This is where the real medicine is because pleasure is medicine. Hmm. And when I would also work as a critical care nurse and working in oncology in different spaces, and I would care for people at the end of their lives. And they would share with me their regrets, how they live more from fear, that they wish that they would have done things differently. I would give them a lot of empathy and compassion and help them as they transitioned and be supportive. But it would just break my heart because there's nothing I could have done to change that outcome for them. Mm -hmm. And I realized that if I take these tools that I know out into the world and I can reach people at an earlier point in their timeline, then I can help them have some healing and hopefully whenever they are taking their last breath, they're not having those regrets. that They've lived life fully. And when I work with my clients, I also use my knowledge as a nurse and do a holistic approach. Mm -hmm. So how can we let go of those emotions that are eating away at us and creating disease, disease in our bodies? And hopefully they won't need to be in the hospital at, towards the end of their lives. And so that's why I'm super passionate about this work. And I was like, I can have support people more powerfully in the world mm -hmm. outside of a hospital setting instead of when it's sometimes a little too late when you're inside the hospital. And I, I think with healing, and first of all, thank you for everything you do and everything that you've done up to this point. Uh, when it comes to healing, I know just in my own practice and what I how I put myself out there is there has to be some kind of humor in the healing. And when I first came across your work, which was on social media, you know, that is the way that we kind of get ourselves out there this day and age. There is such humor behind so much of what you post. And obviously the sexuality is there. Obviously you're, you're going deep talking about how to support yourself sexually, how to support your partner or partners. But you do it in such a way that it's kind of like, oh, you feel a little like, am I supposed to be watching this right now? I mean, is anybody seeing me? And why do you take that kind of approach with this? Because I think that it's unfortunate that we have so much shame in our society around the topic of sex. We're literally all created from sexual energy. That's where we came from. Even if the female was not able to have an orgasm, the male was able to. So sexual energy was pregnant, unless she, present. Even a test tube baby, there was some sexual energy whenever they did the sperm, you know, took the sperm to the sperm bank, right? Those things are happening and there should be no shame again in such creation that brought us into existence. And I feel that also if we can go back, like if we want to create change and transformation in our lives, wouldn't it make sense to go back to the very first thing that brought our lives into existence to begin with and starting from that point? But there's, again, in society, we're programmed to feel so much shame about it that people won't talk about it. And I'm very comfortable talking about it so I just kind of like to be playful with it and have it to be where it, it can be fun and it can be funny and we don't need to take it so serious and we don't need to feel so bad or like we need to hide from the topic because that's why we're all here. And if it wasn't, we wouldn't be here. For example, when Instagram says, your post doesn't meet community guidelines. And I finally replied one time to them when they sent me a survey and in the comments, I said, you know, if it wasn't for sex, you wouldn't have an Instagram community. So I'm not sure why it's not okay for me to share this information. Like none of us would be here. I don't know how this is so wrong. Okay. And so that's what I'm really wanting to advocate that we get the correct education because mm -hmm. we've been miseducated. So then people naturally go look at porn mm -hmm. because they, you know, then you, you have the label of it's a porn star. So then, you know, who doesn't want to be a Hollywood star or a celebrity and be that amazing at it but it's acting and so i think that we need to change this up and allow people to get the information that can empower them mm. because we've been dumbed down with what's out there and it is ridiculous to me ridiculous that we can't even use words like sex like we have to put s three x like you've done that i started doing that there's all these community guidelines like words we can't use i'm like these are normal everyday words that are used in modern medicine I mean, these are, these are, this is a part of life. 
right? And, and, and I'm curious what the comeback was with that on Instagram or any of these other social media, media portals that they're treating it like it's the book that's been banned back in the 60s, right? These are normal uh, words. You know, they didn't reply to that, but my, my younger daughter, who's an adult, she's 30, mm-hmm. she told me a couple of years ago when she looked at my website, she says, Mom, it's so weird that you're spelling sex, S asterisk X. It seems like you're uptight about sex and she knows that I'm not uptight about mm-hmm. sex. And she was really confused by it. And I've had some people ask me too, you know, it's just like, you're the sex expert, but you seem like you can't even write the words out. It's just like, I'm just trying to be sure that my message can be shared. And even when Stripe, Kajabi, other platforms, even having a website that's yes, tantra.com, they scan my content and they wanted to, for a while, they were banning me and I had to appeal to it and everything and say, I'm really trying to provide some great information. I'm a registered nurse. I'm a certified Tantra educator. And even if I want to appeal anything on Instagram, it says, oh, if you're, if you want to appeal this, if this post has anything to do with the words Tantra, like Tantra is a bad word because there's Tantra escorts mm-hmm. that are giving happy endings and they aren't even trained in Tantra. They're just doing that as a gimmicky sales approach mm-hmm. <laughs> majority of the time. And so I'm thankful for the platforms because it connects me to people like you, but mm-hmm. there is a little dance that we have to do um, to be sure because they have closed down a lot of sex positive accounts. Hmm. It, it's frightening because when you see the people out there that are doing honest work, like yourself, like myself, and we want to help people, we want to support people in the most organic and authentic and you know, just really positive way, then there are the ones that are, you know, the bad eggs that are getting in the way and why this is happening. You know, like those who are calling themselves trauma coaches and they're not even trauma informed. Uh, And I'm not poo-pooing those who are out there doing that. What I'm doing is that there's so much content out there and so much misinformation that those who are providing the right information are having to really go through the loopholes and go through the process like yourself just to be able to share authentically, right? And it's unfortunate. So, so that's, I mean, that's why I do this show is that I want to get those on Holistically Speaking that know what they're talking about, are educated and want to make a difference. And it's not just about the bottom line and making a buck. It's about making a difference. And you do that. You do that. Yes. And the humor behind your accounts and, and what you share, that's one part that's great. That can pull people in, right? Like the first thing you said to me when we got on this this uh, on Squadcast to talk about this on the podcast today was, I love your content. You know, I love how you put stuff out. And I get it. Like you have to make this you have to make it engaging to get people even to want to click on it and watch and then maybe read to see what you actually are sharing and then maybe get on a call with you and see how you can support them in the area that you're an expert, right? So it's it's a lot exactly. of a lot of hurdles just to get Yeah, there's to that a place. lot that you go through. So yeah. sometimes when people want to slide into my DMs, I mean my DMs are great if people want to see about working with me mm-hmm. and they're serious about it or their current clients, that's fine. But then people just want to chat and the DMs or treat you like Google. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, I'm not Google. Don't come in here and Google me. Right. <laughs> it's not okay because there's a lot that we do mm-hmm. to be able to share these messages and create content. And it's like my free information is here. And if you want my personalized attention, like my energy, and you want me to specifically engage with you and support you, then you can hire me to coach you. So Mm -hmm. it's just always boundaries, but it's okay because with sex, we're still teaching that in the moment what boundaries are. So it's good to have these conversations, just stick to your boundaries. And just for me, I just always believe one of the things I learned from one of my coaches, Preston Smiles, is high intentions, low attachment. Mm. So I'm just have the best intentions and however it works out is however it works out. And the people that are supposed to find me, my soulmate clients, or we're soul matched, they're going to find me. Like yes. it, it will happen. And I just keep believing in that. I love that. I just actually posted something about that today because there is a, there is a, a it's very common for us who are working in the healing space or serving others in health and wellness to be empaths. And sometimes we forget about our own boundaries and people do cross those boundaries. And we have to know 
when to step back and say, I would love to support you. And, and, the, and those who come to you, you'll know who you align with the longer you do this. Because when you're younger doing this, you want to help everybody. You want to heal the world, right? But as you get older and you become more educated yeah. and more aligned with the kind of clients that you support, you realize that those are the clients that are going to respect your personal space too. And if they're in need and in crisis, of course, there's always a way to get in touch, right? But um, for the work you do, which is very personal, you know, trauma itself is personal, but working within the Tantra space, um, there might be some folks out there listening right now that don't even know what that is. And I would love for you to explain uh, what it means to be in the Tantra field. What is Tantra? Yeah, such a great question. Tantra is an ancient practice and it's founded in India. There's also Buddhist um, aspects of lineages of Tantra. And this is ancient wisdom again, over 5,000 years ago. And it, it, the initial reason it came to be wasn't even about sex. It's not about sex at all, actually. It's about enlightenment. Mm -hmm. It's about expansion. You know, when you see the Maslow's hierarchy of needs and at the very top of that pyramid is self-actualization. That's what Tantra helps you to do, and it helps you to unlock all of these things within you. And initially, it wasn't even to be practiced by females. It was only practiced by males in society. And you would see like Buddhist monks, you know, like we would see them meditating for hours. And what they would be doing is these practices to open up their energy centers and their chakras so the energy could go up and open up their third eye and their crown chakras and they can be like more tapped in with consciousness and and dropped in so they would do breath work practices if you've heard of wim hof method mm -hmm. but method is made up modern here but that's pranayama ancient tantric practices from over five thousand years ago using mantras um saying certain things that can unlock holding your hands in a certain way mudras like instead of gang signs, it's like <laughs> right. an unlocking technology, right? And so there's a lot of these things that we can do, visualizations and yantras. And all of these things are like to elevate the consciousness. And what that does is then the male is going to actually be able to be more dropped in and present. And whenever you have long states of meditation, it impacts our brain and our brain is our largest sex organ. And the longer a male can stay in a meditative state, the longer he'll be able to last in bed. The longer a female, when I say male or female, I'm just speaking on anatomical terms at birth. So a female, the longer that they are able to stay in a meditative state, the more easily they'll be able to have orgasms. It's this monkey mind and the distractions from our modern society and our modern world that have us where we're so much in our head and when we're overthinking, we're under feeling. Mm. So Tantra really gives you these tools through, so you can go through your five senses and drop into your body and feel more pleasure. But if you're with a man who is very aware, knows how to be dropped in and present, and isn't fantasizing, or sometimes as females, we can really sense, we're intuitive, we can sense when a man is kind of masturbating inside of our bodies and playing out something that maybe he's seen in a in a video right mm -hmm. and isn't fully there with us or they may pop a viagra and be able to last a long time but they're not present they're still disconnected so when a man is able to really drop in and be present and has this mastery over his body he becomes a better lover mm. and then your chakras and your energy centers start to line up too that's why i used to laugh before tantra and make fun of the missionary position but once your chakras are aligned and activated and if you're with a lover that is you can orgasm even more quickly because you get these surges of pleasure up through your chakras and it's it's really dynamic it's amazing mm -hmm. and then when i work with my male clients i teach them how to separate their orgasm from their ejaculation so they can be multi-orgasmic and have stamina for hours because this helps to keep from draining the life force energy and that's why they would do this and even in the Taoist practices from China, the emperors would do this because they had many women and the concubine and they didn't know how to keep up with them. And they were trying to not be so depleted of their life force energy. So they learned how to have this mastery. And then because these tools were so powerful, they kept this information from the common people mm. so they could stay in their power. And so then it didn't get passed down. You would have to go to a guru or certain people that would know. 
So then like in India, there's many people that don't even know Tantra because people won't speak about it, but it's very powerful and transformative. And so when you have this mastery, the byproduct of Tantra is that you have better sex, but that's not the intention. Mm. And it is a path of really deep healing though. It's like the sexual healing Marvin Gaye would sing. <laughs> Which I use that song in one of my, in one of my stories. That's my theme song. I love it. I love it. And it's so true. Sexual healing, like to be able to heal our own sexual nature, who we are, embody who we are, know your own body. But going back to what you were just saying, because that that's such a common thing to hear that when a man has an orgasm and ejaculates, he's done. Like roll over, go to bed, right? We That's what we, we see it in the movies. And it does really happen in some circumstances as well. They're just worn out. But the it, it, but it does, it's, it, it's the battery power for the woman's energy, the feminine energy rather. But you're saying that there's a way that's kind of been hidden for years that you can actually make it that charge for both the feminine and the masculine energy. So you can go for hours. So you can actually just align with your partner, right? Yes, it's really beautiful. You know, I, I have been interested in Tantra about a decade before, like 20 years ago. But I was living in Texas in a smaller town. And so I bought a book at Barnes and Nobles and I just put it on my shelf because I was like, I need to have a partner that would be open to this. Mm-hmm. And then when I went to do travel nursing in California years later, I took the book with me in my cars. I went across country, put it back on my shelf. If I would have opened that book, I would have seen that Tantra begins with you as a solo practice, even for males. I'll have men that are like, oh, once I have a woman and I'm in a relationship again, then I want to work with you. I'm like, no, you need to learn this mastery now as a solo practice. Mm -hmm. So you're proficient in it because whenever you're with a woman, it's going to make you want to finish faster. So you want to have a certain level of skill and mastery before you don't want to be practicing this on your partner because then, you know, she's going to be able to tell that you're in your mind just trying to think about what you're doing and you're not being present and that doesn't feel good Mm. for the feminine. Right. So, you know, then I, when I was in a decade later, I was in LA and I was supposed to go out on a date with someone that I had been talking to. He's also from Texas and we were living in LA and I was like, I might see you later, but I'm going out in Hollywood to an, uh, an art event at this club and I'll see you later. And then after hours, we met up. So it was like early morning of three, one. Mm-hmm. And I had no idea that he had studied Tantra and mastered this. He had not shared that with me. And when I was with him, we had prolonged states. I had, I was able to experience prolonged states of ecstatic bliss for mm-hmm. five hours. Oh my! And that's when I had a Kundalini awakening and we had no substances in our bodies. And I, my third eye, my crown chakra opened and I was forever changed. And prior to that, I was like Samantha, from sex in the city, the way I operated, you know? So it was, it was quite a a journey that I've been on and I'm very thankful for that experience because it completely shifted my life path. I would still be a nurse and not even know about this. And I am a radically different person than I was a decade ago. Even just last year becoming a trauma informed master coach, I did a whole other level of growth. Mm. But when I had this experience, you know, before I had, I say I had a soulgasm with him. So, so often what we see is people can have sex skin to skin. You know, we could be naked with someone or it could be performative, but we, can we really connect to someone's soul? Do we really have the skills to do that? And we usually don't. But then in our society, we're like, oh, I really wish I could find a soulmate. How are you going to find a soulmate if you don't know how to have soulful sex? Tantra creates soulmates Hmm. because you're able to connect with someone at that, that depth at those levels. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's time that we started to, to know what's fully possible. But for me, I was having better sex than the majority of my friends. I was multi-orgasmic. I was a recurring guest on Playboy radio, sharing sex tips. And I just thought I had it all figured out and mastered. And after that night, I realized I had only scratched the surface, like the tip of the iceberg of what was possible for me. And that unleashed everything because I was like Alice in Wonderland going down the rabbit hole. I was like, <laughs> okay, wait, if I'm 44 years old and I had no idea that I could experience this in my body, that this was even humanly possible, 
what else is possible for me? And that sent me on this wild ride and journey where I have learned so much about myself, about the world, about energy transformation. And I'm forever grateful that I'm on this path. And I joke with my friends that, you know, it's like the universe source, my guides, they're like, I was so fixated on hyper focused on sex, really. You know, I'm a Scorpio born on Halloween. And I said, I think that they were like, the only way we're going to get her attention is if we send her a message on a dick. Otherwise, she's just going to keep doing what she's doing. <laughs> They're like, she needs to slow down and get it together. <laughs> so, so that did, that was like my big wake up aha moment. And again, I'm, I'm so grateful, forever grateful. And it changed everything because, you know, how we how we are in relationship with ourselves mm -hmm. because pink tantra focuses on self-love and then i started diving in deep and took a break from dating after i dated this person for a while and then i was like let me just be so low and really heal my wounds because i used to jump from relationship to relationship and i would excuse it by like oh i'm hot of course people want to be with me of course i'm not going to be single long like ego 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 right and i was just carrying my traumas and my emotional stuff from one poor soul to the next and then doing the same with me. Right. And, mm -hmm. and so then I was like, all right, let me pause and see what are my patterns that continue to recur? Why do I attract the same types of things? How can I start to heal myself? And when I started to have a really loving relationship with myself, then I started having better relationships with my friends, my coworkers, my lovers, my friends, my family all across the board changed because everyone else is just mirroring back to us the relationship we have with ourselves. Absolutely. So when we want a better relationship, it starts here right. with us. Ugh. And then my male clients, they'll be like, Oh my gosh, I have one male client in his fifties. He's like, thanks for letting me know. I, I had no idea this was possible. I just trusted you to try it. It's like, now I can feel my orgasm from the top of my head down to my big toe. He was like, I never knew I could experience something like that. Like, it's really amazing and, what where our bodies can do, but we're not told. And for those people, like your male and your female clients, actually anybody that, that you're working with, I imagine the first step to any change is awareness. So people realize there's something they want to change. There's something that, that feels a little off or, or they want something that's that's they've heard about that maybe they believe that they can bring into their own lives. So that's a beautiful first step. But the second step is the allowance of being able to let go and allow it to come into your space. So if you have a male client that's never experienced that level of orgasm, that level of experience, or even a woman or those who identify as, um, what is what is it you share with them that allows them to feel comfortable even going there because that is a level of intimacy as someone who winds up working with them as their coach you know how do you how do you help them feel comfortable do you need to be in the room with them i think my own <laughs> yeah well i i think my own comfortability with it makes them more mm. comfortable and i do virtual coaching 99 mm -hmm. of the time i'm my clients have all just there's only a very few that their first sessions are working with me in person 99 percent of my sessions are virtual and online mm -hmm. and whenever i teach them the practices what they need to do i help them understand their bodies i help them understand these practices and what the, it can unlock and identifying any intimacy blocks that they may be having or any pleasure blocks mm -hmm. and then working through those and then they do the practices on their own. And then when we get back together for session, we see, hey, we celebrate their wins. Um, then we see what if any resistances came up and what can support them on breaking through that. And then what is the next level up we're going to do? So it's just this journey that we continue to go on together and just creating a safe environment yeah. with trust and mutual respect and, you know, anything is possible. But it, safety has to be there first yeah. because if we don't feel safe, we're not going to feel orgasmic. We cannot be hyper vigilant, scanning for safety and be orgasmic in the same space. And that's with your partner as well. If you're not feeling safe yes. with your partner. And I, there are so many people out there that might be in a relationship where they don't, they might feel safe in other areas. But when it comes to the most intimate space of being with someone in that kind of environment, there might be a lack of trust because it goes back to what are the wounds that you have within? I mean, I think about my own journey. You don't have to be sexually abused to feel unsafe 
in a sexual relationship, right? There, there could be other things that come into your space as we both learned in trauma, where trauma comes from, those original incidents and, and everything that can really play the part, right? So the, the thing that you mentioned that I, I just totally resonate with is yes, you have to have the trust with your practitioner, obviously your coach, um, and build that sense of connection with them as well. It is an intimacy also, right? Even if you're not Definitely. doing anything with them. And I think that's one thing I really want people to understand that are listening that Dominique being a tantric coach working in Tantra does not mean she's like a sex coach, right? And and because I, I feel like that just demeans in a way. It doesn't mean you're not dealing with sex, but you're going to the most intimate part of a person's soul. That's much deeper, like yeah. you said, than sex. And I think when you're there, that can really create the space for healing and understanding and gratitude for yourself and also being able to please yourself so that you can show up and be there for somebody else, you know? Yeah, really yes. it's just a way of you being and being yeah. more open. Yeah. Because before Tantra, I was operated more of my masculine energy. We're all a mix of masculine and feminine mm -hmm. energy, regardless of how we identify with our gender. Males are even more so a balance of masculine and feminine because they have the XY chromosome. Mm -hmm. And I felt my feminine energy was weak. I felt vulnerability was weak. I had had past wounds mm -hmm. and I was guarded. And, you know, one of the surprising statistics that I learned when I was in Elementum coaching was that over 95% of adults received inadequate parenting. So if we're not sure if a person would abandon us mm -hmm. or we can we'll fully meet our needs or if we also, if we don't know how to be emotionally available, like for me, one of the big learning points that I've noticed about myself is I entered, I went to get my master coach certification because um, one of my coaches that founded the program, Preston Smile said, you know, you can only meet your client's emotions as deeply as you met your own. Yeah. And one of the reasons I'm so fucking funny is what trauma. Can we say that again? Mm -hmm. And I had a lover about 20 years ago, share with me one time. He asked me, why does it sometimes it seems like you know, why, don't, why sometimes do you laugh, but it really seems like you want to cry. And that really caught me by surprise because I wasn't even aware of that I was doing that myself. I was like, whoa, what? And as I've unpacked that more, I've noticed that. So I would just use humor to deflect mm -hmm. or to deal with stressful events, right? Yep. And, and so I, and even just lately as I've healed, like I shed so much this past year, and I cry a lot, but even my adult daughters, I've been repairing my relationship with them because I'm like, I wish I would have known. I was an emotionally immature parent, mm -hmm. and I was raised by an alcoholic, emotionally immature parent. And even though I had a nursing career and all these things together, I still hadn't healed from that. And I thought my success, my you know respect in my profession, that I was handling things right. I wasn't an alcoholic like my mom. I thought I had it together, but I had to unpack that. Mm -hmm. And it was impacting all areas of my life. And so my daughters would share with me recently, they said, you know, you would never really let us see you cry when we were kids. Now, this last year I've cried as I went through that whole program and curriculum and unpacked everything. I've cried more. I told my older daughter, global warming is a real thing because this iceberg is thawing out because I'll just cry and I just let it happen. I have a little tissue box here on my desk that says cry proudly. Love it. Because tears release cortisol, right? Yeah. So, but I was really quick. What happens when you suppress sadness so much? We can be really quick to anger. So I could rage. I could be angry. And I wasn't sure how to let go of the anger that I was holding on to from things that happened as a child. And so my emotions were sometimes scary for me to, to meet with or for me to be with. And now on one other level of what I'm learning and unpacking is, Wow, because I wasn't able to connect with certain emotions, I feel uncomfortable connecting in relationships emotionally. So my value was sex. Like, oh, well, let's just hook up. I mean, because I'm awesome. And once we have sex, like, you're never going to want to not be with me. And, you know, I mean, that was like, and I wasn't because I was hiding behind that because I couldn't go into the depths of the emotional part. So that's been really a big aha light bulb moment for me to connect those dots and to. What a, what a beautiful moment though. And to be able to share that with your daughters too, because it's, it's saying I'm, I'm breaking that generational trauma now. Like we're stopping it right That's what here. we're doing we're, right now. And I remember yes. when I went through my trauma 
coaching as well, my certification, I bawled like a baby every single week in session. And you know what? It was like, I'm like, oh, wait, there's still stuff in there that I haven't dealt with, even though I knew about it and I talked about it. I'm like, I'm so open about it. I'm good. And it was not until it was like waterworks. And it's more than the tears. It was like needing to be understood and helped and like what's going on here Mm -hmm. but it's so liberating then and it just makes so much of a change and i i love what you say about it's hard to support others unless you really have dealt with your own trauma it doesn't mean that there i mean there are plenty of therapists and practitioners out there who possibly haven't been through some type of trauma doesn't mean they can't support but having a clear understanding i think it makes us better at holding space for others you know because even if it's not going through yeah. the same thing, I think there's a level, of, you know? Yeah. Cause you have that level of empathy of like, yeah. You know, yeah. Having survived something and had big challenges and coming through the other side. And then for me, that made me so passionate about helping others and just shining the light Yeah. and shining light into their blind spots or into the places they're afraid to look at. And even for me, as I went through that program last year, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm 54. What took me so long right. to face off with this? I could have dropped that heavy emotional baggage on my journey a long time ago and not continue to carry it with me. And it wasn't as scary. If it was, as long as you're in a space where you know you can trust the person, you know, you trust your teachers, you trust your coach, your guides to support you, and you can unpack it, it's the most freeing and liberating thing. And your life will... Like my life is just really, I feel like I have a whole new beginning. I'm really mm, going to be starting in a trajectory. I cannot wait to see what's happening in the next 10 years. Right. And the second half of our lives too is is just so freaking awesome. I think about that. People are like, oh, turning 50, turning 50. And I'm like, I'm like, bring it. Like there's so much experience that comes with this soul that this yes. next this next 50 is going to be freaking awesome. You know, I've already seen the change in the last 10 years, mainly the last 5 I would say for me and my transformation. But, you know, if you're not dealing with your upset, it's going to come back. Something's going to trigger it. There's going to be an ab reaction. And then you're in something healthy and then all of a sudden you lose it on your partner and you're like, I can't do this anymore. I need to deal with my stuff. And it's like, wow, there's somebody there that might be able to to, to hold your hand while you're going through it. But if you have, if you have no idea how to heal it or even know where to go for support, you're stuck in that cyclical trauma wheel that just will not get resolved. And I think you and I both know it's, it's not that trauma goes away, right? It's kind of like it, we know the parts of us where it sits and when it shows up, we know how to manage it and befriend it and, and have a relationship with it. But when it deals with the most intimate part, like your sexuality, um, and using your example, like when you said you were sharing about your mother and the journey that you had with your mom, for me, the abandonment issue for me came from having a father who was not well. My father was a loving, nurturing, caring dad, but being sick his whole life or my whole life added an element of abandonment, right? And then you mm-hmm. show up in your masculine energy. And that's, that's, a, that's kind of something I want to talk about. I do want to remind folks that we're talking with Dominique DeVita. She is a master transformational tantra coach and registered nurse and she's going to be answering some questions that many of you have turned in can't wait to get to those and if you are enjoying this episode of holistically speaking if it is touch moving and inspiring you in any way please consider passing it along sharing it with others that you think it might resonate with if you have a partner maybe it's something they want to share with you and you want to listen to it together and see how dominique might be able to help you or just being more aware of what you need in your own life. So thank you for that. But I do want to go back to the masculine feminine energy because what we're hearing a lot about in this day and age, especially is the idea of polarity, right? How important polarity is being in your masculine and feminine. How can that be really heavily impact impacted in the world of Tantra? Yeah, well, Tantra is a lot of with your masculine and feminine energy. The feminine energy is like the Shakti energy and Mm -hmm. life force energy. The Shiva is the masculine energy and you need, you know, the yin and the yang, Mm -hmm. you need those opposite energies. And it doesn't matter what your gender is. Again, you can be a same sex couple as well, Mm -hmm. opposite sex, but polarity, the best way to describe it is um, 
like a battery and you, you see a battery has a positive charge and a negative charge not to say that one of them is negative but like say the feminine energy is a positive charge the masculine energy is a negative charge you need those that opposite to create that spark so there's that it's going to ignite so there's that passion there if both if you have something and it's you know both in the feminine energy or the the couples both at resting in their masculine energies more of the time then they start to cohabitate more like roommates instead of lovers and they lose that desire that initial spark that they may have had earlier on in the relationship and so it's really important that we're aware of that and even we can change the dynamic even during a, a lovemaking session mm -hmm. one doesn't always have to be in the masculine or feminine we can it can be a beautiful dance but understanding these energies and then knowing how to play with them and then to use them to you know increase that desire that attraction and ignite the passion is really important and tantra mm -hmm. helps with that is it possible if you are in partnership if one is more in alignment with tantra or more interested in it you can actually I don't want to say convince, but you you can bring your your partner in to having a better understanding of it because that that's a big ask if somebody's not connected to that. How would you go about doing that? Yeah, well, it all just changes. You know, we can impact our relationship just by the change that we make within ourselves. Mm. Not to say that one person should be solely responsible for the relationship. But I often I support couples just by working with one person. I don't need to work with both of them. Because when we start showing again, up again, again, we're mirrors. So when we start showing up differently in our bodies and change our relationship with ourselves, we show up with a different energy in our relationship. And then our partner is just mirroring that back to us. Yeah. So initially they may have some resistance, think that it's silly. But then when they see the changes in their partner, then it gets their interest. So like, hmm, there's something here. And wow, our intimacy and our lovemaking is so much better. And so then they can be, you know, to where they're more interested in participating in it. And so, you know, always it does. And no one, we shouldn't, we think that our partner should always have all of the same interests. They should just be our best friend and everything should be the same. And again, that's like too much sameness. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's those opposite points of view and things that can keep things charged up. And just, if we can just be open, we don't have to always have to share the same beliefs fully, but can we be open and respect and receptive to the other person's journey and their beliefs and what their interests are? Yeah. Love that. That's it's really important. It, and it's so important for us to keep our individuality, you know, I mean, that's why your partner has, has an interest in you and vice versa. I mean, you don't want to become that person, but it's a wonderful thing when the two of you confuse together in the most beautiful way, yes. especially when we're talking about Tantra. All right. You want to get to some questions? Yeah. Let yes, me put on my glasses. We got some goodies. Yeah, All right, let me bring it up. Yeah. So we got a couple of questions from listeners of Holistically Speaking, and and I'm really excited to share these. Okay, so the first question we have is, and this is a legitimate question, but what's the big deal about Tantric? Because Tantra has the tools that can really transform and change your life. You know, we we often we want to look at like self-help books or other things to heal from past traumas right so mm -hmm. tantra gives you this sexual healing and helps you unlock all of the buried treasures within you in our world we're always looking outside of ourselves to solve everything or can we i buy this status symbol what car do i drive when i have this when i get to the status but if we haven't looked inside you know then we're going to end up feeling and we haven't focused on that we're not going to have the experiences that we truly want to experience. We're not going to truly be happy. Mm -hmm. And so Tantra really just helps with that transformation. Again, like going back to self-help books, when we are just constantly reading self-help books and we're thinking that's going to help us. And there are tools in there that can be helpful, but usually we don't fully apply that. And it just becomes information overload. And part of it is stored here. And then we quickly mm -hmm. forget it. And we don't want to just take an in information. We want transformation. Mm. Tantra helps you with three or five senses, bring the information into your body, into this wisdom and this embodiment to create lasting change. And my oldest daughter, she shared with me, she was like helping me on a Zoom room when I had a master class one day. And, and she says, and I was teaching something over a few days. And she says, I really wanted to speak up and say something, but I didn't want to, you know, I want to ask your permission first, but I noticed this thing. And she says, can I share in the next one? And I said, yeah, what is it? And so I was like, oh, great. You can share that. And what she shared was, yeah, I saw my mom 
who had wounds from her alcoholic mother and she kept trying and my mother was suicidal and all these things that I endured she's like and my mother was really trying to heal from that and she would read all these self-help books and in the moment when she would read them there would be a changes for a bit and think I could see a difference but then when she would put the books down and she would be done like it didn't carry over she's like and she goes mm-hmm. you didn't really start changing until you started tantra that's when I started to see change and so if you want that lasting change and transformation, it starts with unlocking the buried treasure within you and letting go of all the things that have been holding you back and status symbols and your job titles and your degrees are not going to do that for you. You need to do that deep work. Now, that's a that's a really important share that you're giving. And what I love is that you're also giving away transform your love life with Tantra. One of your master classes is what you're giving away to holistically speaking listeners. I'm here. I'm listening to you right now. And I'm like, I think I might download that. Yes. <laughs> because yes, it's that's a great for... place. Good place to start. Right? Yeah. Never know what you might for learn sale for a long time. It's been, a you know, I've made thousands of dollars on that master class on my website. I was like, you know what? It's just time to gift this one because I have several different types of master classes. Yeah. I was like, I just want to gift this one now. And that way more people that maybe be ske- they're skeptics or they're not sure what this is about, it'll give them a little sample and mm-hmm. more awareness so they can see what, you know, have know what's possible for them and make it the best decision for themselves. It's a good starting point. Yes. Like Tantra 101. Yeah, and I actually have a course. I do have an online course, Intro to Tantra, and it covers everything in six Uh, weeks, and you can go at your own pace. And that's really amazing, too. Friends, definitely get on that. It is a free giveaway to this masterclass that Dominique is graciously offering. Why not take it and just see if it's something that aligns with you, right? Awesome. I love that. And thank you for sharing that question. And Jennifer out of New York uh, actually was the one that shared that first question, but she also said, are people practicing this? Are they doing this for just a prolonged feeling of sex? Do they have a limited amount of time? Are they empty nesters? <laughs> she's, she's laying it all out there. But why do you feel, or why are most people coming to you initially? I think that's what she's trying to say. You know, sometimes everyone thinks like, oh, do I always, like, I don't always have time on my schedule to have five hours of sex. Now, whenever you have this experience, even when my best friend was like, I don't know why you like to have sex for a long time. And I said, well, if you would have sex the way I've experienced it, you would want to experience that. Now, if it's what we've seen replicated in uh, porn and with these jackhammer moves and they're not really present and it's not really doing that much for of a, us, then, yeah, of course, we don't want to d- endure that for five hours. But whenever you're having these amazing life-changing orgasms, For five hours, it's like, oh, yes, let's keep going. You know, what they say, time flies when you're having fun. Mm -hmm. But you can also have like a Tantra quickie. It doesn't always have to be that you have this huge, you know, free time on your calendar. But just knowing now if you're connecting and you're connecting, you're having more intention, more awareness, and you're able to be more connected with your partners and just have this as a way to have a deeper understanding and have this deeper intimacy, it Mm -hmm. will really strengthen your relationship. I have to say, the first time I probably heard about Tantra was when, I mean, I'm a huge Sting fan, like forever. Right? That's <laughs> like how it happened for me, completely. Did it? Like He yes. was talking about it with Trudy Styler, and it was always like they could do eight hours of sex. And I'm like, what is up with these two? Not, not, not to mention they're both hot, and he's amazing, right? Yes. And you're sitting there, and you're like, what does that even mean, eight hours of sex? How are they able to do this? And then he goes out on concert, and he's off up on stage. So that was my first time ever hearing about it. And I, that brought me into this world of wanting to know more, but I didn't really... Um, I learned about it just from learning, right? Just being around people that like yourself, but I'm still amazed at that. You know, he's what, he's gotta be, I think he's like 21 years old. He's like 60, 71 now. That's crazy. Okay. Like what is he doing? You know, it's, Uh, it's really amazing. I had a client that he wasn't able to make love to his wife and Viagra was even failing him and he was 60. And we started working together and now he's having, they're having better sex in their sixties and their thirties. And I didn't work with her, but she told him one day, now I need to work with Dominique so I can keep up with you. But he said, oh yeah, before work one morning on Monday, I had sex with my wife for an hour. She had six to eight orgasms and I was ready to go again 
the next day, he goes, I feel so much power in my penis. I wish I discovered this 15 years ago. Power and he, in the and penis. he shared too that all, <laughs> he's like my, and he, he sent me some texts. He texts me and thanks me all the time. He's like, oh, my wife is blissed out again today. And it's been two years since I worked with him. Amazing. And he, he, he helped heal his, he's like my anger wounds all but dissipated. Um, you helped heal a, a familial trauma, you know, generational trauma that I had. And he was like, and I'm, I've become a new person to myself and a new partner to my wife. And Beautiful. he was like, I, and this is after 30 years of marriage that they're experiencing yeah. this. So even as you're older, you can have amazing sexual experiences. It doesn't stop when you're 60 or 70, as long as you, you know, you just have to learn how to unlock these things within your body. It's there. I'm so glad that you brought this up because I actually had another, another listener that and it's a man. Uh, I do have some male listeners here. And he was talking about ED, erectile dysfunction, being in his 50s now. He's like, do I need to rely on Viagra? And can something like Tantra help me? And that is Mike out of Boston. Hey, Mike. Mike, I've got you covered. <laughs> this will definitely, <laughs> definitely help you. And it, it's so amazing. And then you'll feel so much more energized. There's health benefits to it. Mm. It's just amazing. But I, and I feel for men that they're not educated that this is possible for them. It's a shame, you know, and so that's why I'm here to advocate and I work with both men and women, because if I just work with women who are the, you know, and I don't share this with the men, who are the women going to be with? So I, mm -hmm. I want to empower everyone, not just men or just women. It's so important. And I, I feel like in this age, as we get into this midlife range, men feel like if they are having ED or they're not able to perform, they instantly have to go to the blue pill. And that's like this badge of, it's almost like the scarlet letter for guys, mm -hmm. you know, like, oh, I'm at that point in my life. And I can't imagine how that doesn't impact you emotionally, right? So being able to like revive yourself and know that there's other possibilities, but also, yes, if you have these trauma wounds, that can be part of it too, that you're not even aware of. And that's the kind of work that can really be empowering, you know, yeah, for you, for definitely. your partner. Yeah. So thank most you for sharing definitely. that. And I want to add right. to that. Yeah. I want to add to that too, you know, then those medications have side effects. So right. now you're not having to take medications. And, and so how is that impacting you? Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, there's a correlation between a lot of times you'll see males that have erectile dysfunction. A lot of times I frequently will see that they also have a mother wound. Mm. that's impacting them. And so that's definitely a connection there that can be present. Not always, but it has been. And so with the work that I do, I help also, I help males with premature ejaculation and porn addiction or dependence too. Yeah. Yeah. When you mean the, the wounds with the mother, do you have, can you give an example without being too triggering? Um, yeah. Maybe not feeling completely loved or seen or understood mm. by your mother. Yeah. Yeah. It can be a big one or your mother always being very critical of you or some things that could yeah. really make it challenging to have that kind of intimacy and not even being aware, you know, that how that had been impacting you. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, Dominique's got you. Ladies, Dominique's got you. We all got you. Find somebody who yeah. you feel comfortable with that can help you in these areas. There's, there is always room for healing, right? Always room for healing. All right, this is a fun question. I've actually never heard of this, so I'm really curious about this one myself. This is an anonymous question coming from New York, and it is, what is the deal with all these rolling orgasms? I've been reading about them a lot. It's it's like one after another, after another, after another. She had all these little like faces, like the emojis, like, ooh. <laughs> so I'm reading her, her message. So what is a rolling orgasm? Can you I'm share not really more about sure that? what the term rolling orgasm is. It just makes me think really of multiple orgasms, mm -hmm. you know, where it just is like, for me, it feels almost like a waterfall. Like it just keeps flowing. And that's what would mm -hmm. happen when I have my soul gasm. And I just continue to have these really high states of pleasure and arousal and bliss. Soul gasm. I like that better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Do you trademark that? I know. I you actually you should. It's so interesting because I felt that I was like, I don't really know how to describe it. I guess just soulgasm. But then as I've looked at even some ancient tantra, I mean, some older tantric texts and some things, I think even a book by Osho, mm -hmm. um, I've seen them use the word soulgasm. And I was like, wow. Because I, but I just, that's just like 
best description I could think of it. No, I wish I could trade more of that. It was definitely oh, my experience, though. I love that, though. We're, t- we're definitely talking more about the soul and the essence of who we are. We're, we're hearing mm-hmm. so much about that. And I'm so glad because I feel like I'm I'm still getting in touch with my own soul. Right. Yeah. So to, to, to align something with the word soul is just so, so personal, so intimate, you know, mm-hmm. and if you can share that with somebody else, like really get to the, the heart of who you are. I think that really can open up such a beautiful space for partnership or even just if, if it's, you know, you don't have to be in partnership. We're promoting whatever is comfortable to you here, right? As long as you're, it's a safe space for all involved, right? And this um, is great practices for being solo. Yes. You know, this is wonderful because one, especially for women too, you're not going to settle for a fuck boy or males don't need to settle for fuck girls, right? But you're mm-hmm. not going to settle because you can have this amazing pleasure with solo tantric rituals. And then you, when we become our own best lover, then we actually attract better lovers because we're raising the bar. It's kind of like you don't want to go shopping at the grocery store when you're starving. So, you know, if you're satisfying yourself and you're having amazing experiences, you're just not going to settle and throw a bunch of like junk dick in your cart. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be like, no, I don't need that. I, I'm, you know what I mean? I'm, ha- I'm, that's an impulse healthy, buy. <laughs> I want some healthy, conscious cock, please. Only <laughs> impulse buy. <laughs> yes. It's at impulse. the front of the store right near the register. <laughs> <laughs> no impulse fucking. I used to impulse fuck, not anymore. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm sure we've all been there where we've made those, yes. we've made those unconscious purchases. <laughs> For sure. I definitely have. Uh, this is so great. I but love everything you then they have like this no return policy. It was really, it's really a stress. Really? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> well, I love everything you shared today. This was amazing. And I do want to also remind those listening that Transform Your Love Life with Tantra, Dominique is offering her masterclass, which is now available for free. All you have to do is download it and watch it. And I'm going to download it right after this and see how, you know, I can make changes in my own life. It's, it's important that we do we take the power back, you know? Yes. And I would say uh, before we go, there is something that I always do with my guests and I would love to have this moment with you, a little game that I love to play. And this is like a word association game. So I'm going to throw out a word and then I want you to come back with the first word that comes to mind. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. And by the way, I just want to say thank you for all those that did submit. Um, Jennifer, Mike, and our anonymous, oh, NR, actually. Uh, thank you for submitting your questions. Those are some great yes. questions. And thank you for answering additional questions that came our My way. My pleasure. Dominic. And thank, I want to thank everyone for asking as well. Yes. For being brave. Thank you. And- yes. Be brave. Be, bla- be brave and play, right? Mm-hmm. Which brings us to our first word, playful. Playful. Sex. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, sister. All right. Um, soulgasm. Mm, life-changing polarity energetic meditative calm breath life movement medicine trauma did you say trauma Mm -hmm. trauma from my mama (laughs) (laughs) i'm gonna give that to you because you rhymed (laughs) And then our last word is Tantra. I didn't hear that. Tantra. Oh, Tantra. Everything. Mm. Everything. It's um, freedom. Empowerment. Yeah. Those are good words. Mm -hmm. Those are good words. Those are good words to end on. I'm all over that. Thank you so much. And then with... With that, I want to ask you if there's anything that you would like to leave holistically speaking listeners with that um, you just want them to walk away with and, and know that there's possibilities. I just want to invite everyone to not dim your light. Don't feel shame about yourself. Don't feel shame about your body. Your body's literally wired to experience so much pleasure. And if anyone deserves to enjoy your body, it's you. Don't just think that you having pleasure or enjoying your body is only when you're with a partner or a lover. And so just... I want you to think about the lighthouses in the ocean and those lighthouses, they need to shine their lights to help other people find their way home. And that's what we need to do is turn our lights back on 
and see what things have been dimming our light and let that go and just, you know, light ourselves up with the things that turn us on that we're passionate about to have play, to have fun, to be a kid Mm -hmm. and, and just be that light and light everyone else up. I think that we spend our childhood wanting to be adults. And then we find out that adulting is really not that much fun. And if we could return to our inner child, you know, we could have so much more fun in this lifetime. Oh, absolutely. Childish enthusiasm needs to stay with us. doesn't mean you have to be a kid all the time, but don't lose your childish enthusiasm, right? Yeah. And don't take sex so seriously. Be playful even or laugh about it. If we think it needs to be so performative and it doesn't, just relax. It's just your bodies and Mm -hmm. our bodies just have different things that they do. And, you know, if you're not with someone that you can laugh and play with as well, then just maybe rethink that because you should have that level of comfort with your lovers too. That's great. I love that. Thank you so much for everything you share, your expertise, your your wisdom, and just your just your presence. Thanks, Dominique. It was, oh, you're it was welcome. Really Thank pleasure you for creating such a beautiful place, Hillary. I really appreciate you, and I'm so thankful to be here and have this this chance to share with everyone here. Do not miss the opportunity to grab Dominique's free masterclass on how to transform your love life. I have already downloaded it. And let me tell you, it is not one to miss. You're going to find the link to that in the listen notes on the podcast page. And you can also find ways to connect with Dominique on her social media. And as I mentioned, I want to hear from you. Leave me a voice message at speakpipe.com slash holistically speaking. You can also leave me an email at holistically speaking at gmail.com. Share your thoughts, share your questions, and most importantly, let me know what you want to cover on the show. More guests like Dominique, right? Just let me know because your voice matters. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. If this episode has got you thinking about what you want to do, consider sharing it with your partner or with a friend. You know someone that might want to hear these words, pass it along to them. And of course, I hope you get a chance to bliss out yourself with what we shared today on the show. So until next week, be kind to your mind, be kind to your body, and be kind to your soul. And as always, I'm sending you so much love and even more space for self-love.